Hey guys, it's Abby Everingham, and today I'm going to teach you how to become a licensed realtor in Alberta, Canada. Um, so anyone that's been thinking about getting their license and kind of is wondering how the process works, this video is for you. I'm a realtor from Calgary, so listen and learn. I've been studying the industry since I was young and could yearn. I like golf and the gym, board games too, so if you have some common interests, subscribe and we'll stick together like glue. a little bit of a rumor and I don't know if this is true or not that as of June 2022 so this upcoming June the month I am filming this is January late January um you're gonna have to get your license through state kind of like the setup that they have in Ontario as of now this is how you get your license this is how you got your license a year ago when I got mine. If you can get in before June when they switch it all over, that's what your objective is gonna wanna be because I'm sure once you have to get it through a college, first of all, it's gonna be harder to apply right now. All you need is your high school diploma for one and then a criminal background check for two and that's it. Um, second of all, I'm sure it'll cost more money. And then third of all, I feel like it'll take a little bit longer and they might have an amount that you can't exceed each week of working in your license opposed to right now it's all at your own pace so you could get it in a month if it took you a month or you have up to two years to complete it in total so you could wait out those whole two years so step one into getting your license in alberta is you're gonna do it through reca.ca so reca.ca this is where you have to get your license um, and this is where all like the courses and the schooling part of it is. So they have it split up into two groups and this is if you solely wanna get your residential license. Um, first one you're gonna do is the fundamentals of real estate. And this course is 10 modules. Honestly, each module is really long. Like I'd say about each module is 10,000 pages. And you have up to a year to complete this. I'd say it takes the average person about three months to complete. Yeah, I mean, I worked on it probably about like an hour a night for for three months. It took me, mm, it took me like four months to get my license. So maybe it was two months that I worked on the fundamentals. Um, but a really good trick that I learned is you can actually get your Apple phone to read to you. It's for people, it's a feature they have for people that are blind. And if you look up how to do that, like how to get your phone to read to you, it's just something in the settings. And then when I was driving, I'd log on to reca.ca on my phone. And then you swipe down both your fingers and your phone will start reading it to you. So I figured out a little loophole on how to listen to my license opposed to actually having to physically read it on the computer screen or in the book. And then once you finish all of these modules, that's when you take the test on it. You have to score at least at 80% on your real estate test. And this is just of the broad of, but fundamentals goes in a little bit to commercial, a little bit industrial, a little bit residential, and a little bit rural. And it just kind of says like the basic laws and terminology that you're gonna need to know for that. Um, then once you de have done that, so that course costs around like twelve, thirteen hundred, if I remember correctly. Then you do the test, which costs I think one hundred and fifty. Have to score eighty, and then you're graduated the first part, part number one. Then you go on to residential. If you want to do only commercial, you do your commercial um, property management. You pick what one you want to do. Most people are probably going to want to do residential. And then it's the exact same thing. So the course is about the same length. I think it's only nine modules for the residential, but they're longer chapters. So it kind of balances out. And then um, that's like 12, 1300 again. And then like the exam is 150. So once you've done those two things, if you only want to get like your residential license, after that, all of the schooling is done kind of in the middle i'd say like when you're halfway down the residential you're going to want to get your criminal background check because it's an intense one they actually take like full-on like mug shots of you and then you also have to do like all your fingerprints it's like so then they send it off to ottawa um so it can take a couple months so i'd suggest like 
depending on how quickly you're working on your license, because it only stays valid for, I think, a year, um, go get that done. And you can get that done at any local police station. I think you just call and book an appointment. So then once you get done your license, this is where the fun parts come in. This is where you're going to pick your brokerage. So in real estate, the real estate brokerage makes money off you. They don't pay you at all. You pay them to be with them. So you can go out and you can interview anyone and you can sign with really whoever you'd want to. So Remax, Century 21, EXP, that's who I'm with. Any of those, you ask them the basic questions like, how much is your monthly fee? How much commission do you take? Do you have a cap? Which means if you hit a certain gross income, you stop paying them for the rest of the year. So for example, EXP's cap is 80,000 once you've made gross commission of 80,000, including what you pay out to them, um, then you get to keep 100% of your commission for the rest of the year. So you'll have paid them 16,000 once you've made 80,000, and then you stop paying them commission for the rest of the year. Some of them don't have that. So you'll just be paying like 20, 30% commission, no matter how much deals you're doing in a year, which kind of sucks. So each brokerage is super, super different in what they offer. Some will offer more training than others. Some will offer um, all online. Some will offer like in, you an office in person. Um, websites, business cards, some of that will be provided in your, just you going on the brokerage. You're going to want to ask around because they are also different and you're going to want to see where you'd fit in best. So I know, for example, I think Remax they are more expensive and I don't know exactly their quotes, but I think they pay a less commission. Um, so you don't have to pay them as much as a percentage when you sell a house, but their monthly fee is like a couple thousand. That's what I've heard. I don't know for sure, but I think that's kind of how they work. If any Remax agents are watching this, comment down below, I guess. Um, EXP, we pay 20% of our commission up until 80,000. And then we only pay like $150 desk fee. I know like the real estate professionals, that was the other brokerage I was considering going with when I was picking my brokerage. And they only do like a 200 flat fee for like transactions and then $150 um, monthly fee. So they're super, super cheap, but I don't think you have any like training or like business cards, website, any of that. And it's not a really well-known brand. There's also the option of joining a team. So if you join a team, which a team is under a brokerage, so you have your brokerage and you can sign with any brokerage you want. Um, and then you have your teams, which are just someone like a real estate agent, like I could start a team um, and then train you and give you clients. So if I gave you clients in a team, for example, I don't have a team, but you would pay me 50% of your commission, no matter if it was a client that I gave you or one you got yourself. So it's a little bit harder to grow your name if you join a team, but it's easier if it's like your first couple years because you get so much knowledge. For myself, I had been studying the industry since I was eight, so I kind of kind of knew what to do when I got licensed. But for someone that just decided to pick up their real estate license, that would probably be like the equivalence to like college or university for you in the real estate sense because yes you would be paying more but you'd probably have like your first couple deals given to you and you'd be paying for like that knowledge also and 50 percent is kind of the flat fee for teams um and i know like with exp so if you have a team under exp your first couple transactions so your your cap out splits in half so after you make 40000 then you stop paying EXP. But I think when you join a team and you're under the brokerage, you'd still have to pay EXP the 20% of your commission until you cap out. So 40000 that's approximately four deals. Um, and then you'd also have to pay your team lead like 50%. So it's kind of like hit or miss. Um, yeah, the way like teams get this is so much information. The way that teams get like deals to get give off to agents is like the system called lead gen and like lead gen is something that an agent can pay for and like a good one's like three to five grand a month 
and then they'll just give you phone numbers to call that have are people that have clicked on like a house searching website for you to call them and like be like hey like see so you're looking at this house do you want to go view it um what's like getting you in the thoughts of moving types type stuff like that i've never used lead gen i get all my clients organically through social media or door knocking or referral sphere stuff like that but that is an option as well anyways so you pick a brokerage you go out and interview a whole bunch after you pick one you pay the licensing fee which is 750 dollars you pay the onboarding fee for whatever brokerage. I know EXPs was 250, I'm, I'm pretty sure maybe it was 500, but every brokerage would be different. That'd also be something you'd wanna ask when you're interviewing brokerages. And then, well, and then I guess you're just ready to sell. So then it comes like you finding your clients and this is the whole job of real estate. The first like three months of me having my license, I was doing 12 hour days of prospecting through social media, through door knocking, through just bringing up conversations with my A to Z list of my contacts, it's Snapchat, um, just my normal contacts, Instagram I started doing. And it is all just like getting your name out there. And I, I did it for three months, 12 hour days when I first started and I didn't get like one paycheck for that three months. And then I started and then once I got like my first one, I just kind of exploded and I boomed. Um, that doesn't happen for everyone though. Like you might be very like cut in between. My biggest suggestion is as long as you're putting in those hours at the beginning and like throughout because prospecting is the whole job of real estate is like finding business. Um, you'll be fine it's just like i think why the fail rate in real estate is so high i think it's like 87 percent is because people just don't know how to work for themselves so they don't have the um can drive and enough in them to be able to sit down and work for hours by themselves without anyone being like you have to they'll just go out and do whatever um which you can't do because this is self-employed job the only way you're getting paid is if you find clients for yourself. I found door knocking like the most effective way. I got my first three listings that way and I, I work with more sellers than buyers right now, which is probably what you would want. Um, you might just have love working with buyers, but on the sell side, you get like your sign in the front yard. So the whole neighborhood starts to get to know who you are. Um, yeah, it's really like, with buyers it's more buyer dependent in the sense that you could take them on 50 showings so like 50 hours and then them decide not to buy when you list a house it's just if you price it right you're doing enough advertising it's gonna sell so it's more of a guaranteed um sale for you so i like working with buyers in that sense and i also just love like the advertising aspect of it when when you're doing buyers it's not so much it's more so a scavenger hunt and then lastly like the biggest fee when it comes to real estate would probably be maintaining your license so the biggest fee that's because you can split it up into lump sums um but the biggest like just like standard one is $3,500 and this is for Kreb. So no matter who you go with as your brokerage, you're still going to have to pay this. This is something all realtors need to have. And this is just the website that realtors use to look up listings, to look up solds and expireds and like get all the information from that. So that's $3,500 flat fee. And then also month to month, I think it ends up being like $60 a month. Um, and then you'll have like your brokerage fee which mine's 150 and then you also have to pay for sentry lock which is like the app realtors use to get into lock boxes to open the doors for the houses that are on the market um yeah it's a lot of upkeep and then like when you get a listing you have to pay for photos which are usually around 500 dollars. you have to pay for signs which are like 150 business cards so it is a job that like if you want to get into it you really have to be the type of person that wants this and you're not just in it for the money because if you're just in it for the money 
I mean, sometimes it works out, but most of the time you're just gonna, if you're not passionate about it, you're not gonna wanna put the time in. And like, it's all about putting in the times of prospecting and knowing like the job isn't just showings and listing presentations. Like the, again, like I didn't do a listing presentation and a showing for a good while into my license. Um, I was just doing like prospecting. So I think that like wraps up the video. If you guys have any questions about getting your license, um and still like are a little bit i don't know worry of if you want to it is a great job it's the type of job i wake up every single morning and i'm super super excited for the day but yeah let me know if you guys need anything want anything and yeah i can be your mentor This week has been crazy for me, like such a roller coaster. I got two new listings, which is exciting. Um, both of them are coming like next week, but I broke my foot. I'm literally wearing a nice top, but then uh, my gym leggings. And then I also lost my car key and I only have one key, so. I had to get my car towed to Mercedes and they, because it's a high theft item, like a key, it's not something that you can just order and pick up and they'll give away, like they need to, first of all, connect it with the key and then, yeah, I don't know. I broke my foot, lost my key, like in the first, a couple of days. Um, lost out on a listing presentation. It's a roller coaster, so like experienced a whole bunch of downs, but then also experienced a whole bunch of ups with like I picked out a new apartment this like week. I have to have two years. When you get into real estate, since it's a self employed commission based job, in order to buy your own property, even if you're making like bank every single year, um, you have to have two years track record for mortgage lenders to want to lend with you since it's self-employed commission based and it's not a guaranteed check coming in every month, which kind of sucks. So I'm renting for another year and I just found a new place, which I'm super excited about. And um, I got two new listings. So like, yeah, there's every single week since it's such like, it's a crazy job, honestly. But you'll experience high highs and low lows. Keeps life interesting. All right. I will talk to you guys next week. Bye, guys.